everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I am very excited to be bringing you the first episode in a new mini series. It's been a while since we've had a color series of any kind here on the channel. The last one that we had was the color mixing series and before that was color spotlight and I have been itching to bring you a new series along these same lines for a while now. I've spent months thinking about different lists and different topics I wanted to cover. And throughout the next couple of weeks or many weeks, we're going to be taking a look at some different color families as well as watercolor supplies such as brushes and papers and go over what are my top five picks. We are going to be starting off this series with my top five favorite blue watercolor paints. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Before I say what this list is, I feel like we need to cover what this list is not so that there isn't any confusion about what this top five is actually covering. These are not my top five favorite blues in life. Like if you ask me what my favorite color is, my favorite blue color is actually turquoise, which you won't find on this list because there are some different criteria for this particular list that I've come up with. This list is also not my top five recommendations to put on any palette by any artist ever. Everyone has different needs and different desires and different styles and different subjects that require different colors of paint. It's also not the exact order that I'm recommending you add these to your palette. For instance, my number one pick isn't the first color, followed by number two and number three. They might be more helpful in different arrangements if you're not going to have all five available to you in your painting practices. What this list is, is as of this moment that I am recording this video, they are my top five personal favorite watercolors that I go to and lean on throughout the course of my watercolor painting. This is based on how much I use them on a daily basis or how often I seek them out or look for them on my palette, how often I use them when I'm working on commissions, which means I have to really trust the reliability and performance, and or based on what I think about how they contribute to my palette overall. My goal for this series is to share some of my favorite supplies in watercolor painting with all of you, but everyone's favorites are going to be different and that is absolutely okay and encouraged. And of course, this is a creative medium, so we're all gonna have our own personal preferences. So be sure to let me know what your top five colors are in the comments below and why you like them so much. If they didn't make this list, maybe you can share that with other viewers and uh, I'll have a nice discussion down there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this list. And I have to admit, I spent days agonizing over what my top five favorite blues are going to be. And I thought that this was really interesting because I never considered blues to be one of my favorite colors and watercolors. And I don't think that I use them a, a particularly excessive amount. I don't paint a lot of skies or landscapes or things like that. So I was really surprised that I had this much trouble narrowing down to my top five. And in fact, I couldn't really do it. So I have an honorable mention in this category and that is might be a little bit shocking to some of you and that is because it is Prussian blue. Now I did a color spotlight series on this color. I absolutely fell in love with it when you all recommended it to me to try out uh, here on the channel. It's been on my palette ever since and it's certainly watercolors to use and to go to. So why is it in the honorable mention position instead of higher up on the list? Um, and that is because I have another color that we are going to be looking at in just a little bit that fills the same niche. It's a very similar hue. It's a similar value. I use it for similar things and it's just my current obsession. So that's the one that made it on the list. So here an honorable mention because I couldn't leave it off is Prussian Blue. Now my favorite Prussian Blue comes from M. Graham. It's made from PB27 as all Prussian Blues are. And M. Graham's I feel like has the deepest, darkest, richest values with the most intensity to the color. I find a lot of Prussian Blues will dry rather flat and M. Graham's definitely is an exception to that. Now throughout this video, we are going to be doing these little color mixing swatches for each of the colors. You can see how they react with different pigments. Um, they're for the most part going to be the same mixtures with a couple of exceptions. If we get towards the bottom of the page and there's a color that I really wanna show you, it's mixing potential with. So starting off with the greens, the first one in that column is um, any of the shades of blue that I'm using. So in this case, Prussian blue mixed with lemon yellow from Daniel Smith. That's PY175. The green color in the middle mixed from the Prussian blue is using Hansa Yellow Deep, which is PY65. The last green in this column 
is the color blue that we're using. So in this case, once again, Prussian blue mixed with quinacridone gold PO49. In the purples column here, we've got the first sample is mixed with red violet from Rembrandt PV19. The second kind of purpley type color is a muted purple because that is the blue mixed with a warm red. That's Pyrrol Red from Daniel Smith. It's PR254. And that last section in that column is me trying to mix the darkest color I can. And I'm going to be using transparent Pyrrol Orange, also from Daniel Smith. I believe it's PO71 or 73. I'll have to double check that. On the far right hand side, we've got our blue color mixed with phthalo green blue shade to make a nice beautiful aqua. And from there, I may or may not add extra colors and I'll let you know once we get there. I think that's all we're going to be doing for the Prussian blue before moving on to my top five pick. Coming in in spot number five, making our official top five blues list is Cobalt Teal. And this specific version is from Imgram. This is my favorite version made with PB28. There's also a Cobalt Teal made with PG50 that are relatively close in color, but I like this version the most for its granulation patterns and just its overall hue. My favorite application for cobalt teal is for use in skies. I just think it's a really beautiful light sky blue color and it also makes shockingly vivid bright greens when mixed with light yellows. It makes some really nice mid-range greens but it doesn't get too dark because the pigment itself is an awfully light pigment. My favorite application in the green family for this that I actually found out from Miss Lindsay over on the Frugal Crafter is that it is perfect for mixing the color that you would need to paint lichen, like from a forest here uh, nearby in the Santa Cruz Mountains. So we have a lot of lichen on the trees and I was having an impossible time figuring out how to make this color with the normal palette that I was using. So thank you, Lindsay, for that little tip. I really appreciate it and uh, it's definitely a big staple for me. Uh, mixed with that red violet, we get a beautiful, what will be a very granulating purple once it dries. I'll show you that at the end. And mixed with that uh, pyrrole red, we get some nice muted grays and um, like dusky purpley red colors. It's really neat. Now I tried to mix this color with the uh, transparent pyrrole orange like I did with the other blues, but it's just going to make kind of a murky, muddy gray color because those two colors aren't very complementary towards each other. But in order to get a dark blue color, I can mix it with neutral tint. Uh, I used my Daniel Smith variety and it makes this really beautiful, deep, dark, moody, granulating blue. Next with the phthalo green, we get a nice bright sea foamy type of green aqua color. Once again, at the end of this video, we will see how all these colors dry and granulate in their final appearance. Coming in at number four on our list is Thalo Blue Green Shade from Daniel Smith, made from PB15 colon three. Now, it doesn't have to be from Daniel Smith. This is a, a rare color where I don't have any strong opinions about what manufacturer makes it. They're all very, very similar. It is a very vivid, bright, intense blue shade. And again, I wanna refer back to what I said this list is not at the beginning of the series because my favorite color of Thalo Blue, like my favorite version of it, just looking at it, is the red shade from 15 colon six. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful warm blue that is just gorgeous. Um, but I actually don't use it that much in painting. I don't have a lot to be fair, like I don't have the option, but when I go to Thalo Blue, I'm looking for that bright green undertone. So that is what I use this color for, even though there are other options out there that perhaps other people like to use more. Like I was mentioning before, you get these intensely vibrant, unnaturalistic greens when you mix it with a lemon yellow, but it also can get really earthy and deep and gorgeous when it's mixed with that quinacridone gold. It makes surprisingly bright, clear violets, even though typically you would expect a cooler blue um, not to make as bright purples. I think it does just a wonderful job at that. When you mix it with that warm red, you still get a pretty pretty nice color of purple that's a little bit more on the muted side and mixed with your transparent pyro orange you get a color that is very very close to black. Mixed with your phthalo green you're going to get phthalo, a, a version of phthalo turquoise. It's what Daniel Smith uses for their phthalo turquoise even though there is a single pigment 
they look turquoise available and this is just one of the prettiest combinations I think for that aqua teal color. At number three on our list, we have the paint color that kind of knocked Prussian blue into that honorable mention spot, and that is my new current obsession, the Maya Dark Blue from Daniel Smith using PB82. This color has a very similar hue, as I mentioned before, to Prussian blue. It's a little bit duller, uh, more dull, duller, more dull. Anyway, um, it doesn't have as much intensity as Prussian blue has, and it does granulate a lot more. I find that it's a really interesting color. It creates these beautiful textures and these beautiful, beautiful moody undertones for shadow areas or stormy skies or anything like that. They create these really intense earth greens. Um, so even though the color itself isn't all that intense, when you mix it with the yellows, it tends to bring out this really uh, cool, earthy vibrancy. Like it's not unnatural at all, but it's definitely has a lot of punch to it. It makes really surprisingly vibrant, deep purples uh, when mixed with a bright magenta color, and then it gets more in that moody, uh, dusky range with that warm red, and we can get an equally dark as we did with the phthalo blue. Uh, we can get equally as dark with the transparent power orange to make a black color, although this version of the black granulates and has a really lovely texture. Coming in at number two on our list is the king of just deepest, darkest, most beautifully luscious blues uh, that I can think of, and that is Anthraquinone Blue from M. Graham PB60. This is the same pigment that is used for most Indenthrone or Indenthrine blues. Um, however, this version has so much more vibrancy to it than I've seen in any other brand, and I just prefer it so much more. Um, earlier on, I mentioned that this list is not composed of my favorite colors, um, just in general, but how useful they are for mixing. This is probably my favorite hue on the list. Like, just if I had to look at these five colors and pick my favorite one, this is probably it. The reason it came in as number two instead of number one is because my number one pick, I feel like, has more variety and uses, but I still had to include this uh, fairly high on the list because of just how beautiful it is and how useful it is for darks and shadow colors. As you can see here, we have a range of fairly muted greens, but the vibrancy and the purples is just out of control, and you can add this to any dark color to make it even darker. Um, it's just a truly lovely color to work with. I also love mixing this color with Terra Rosa from M. Graham, which is sort of like a Venetian red. It's made from PR101, and it makes these really dusky grayish purple tones that you can see in the center bottom of the page here. And um, I was just really, really in awe of that combination. Uh, I mentioned that this does something weird with the Rembrandt's version of Red Violet. We'll take a look at that at the end of the video. Um, that's the main purple swatch on this page, and so in the bottom right hand corner, I also added a swatch of purple mixed with the M. Graham's Quinacridone Rose, and it doesn't do the same type of funky texture. So whether or not you want that texture in your paints, that's up for you to decide, but I just wanted to show you all the options. So what color did I pick for my number one slot on my top five? Well, that would have to be Ultramarine Blue. And in this uh, particular instance, I'm using Ultramarine Deep from Sennelier. It's PB29, like all the other Ultramarines. Um, I also like Da Vinci's brand and M. Graham's brand as well. Daniel Smith dries a little bit too hard for my preferences. Um, so I'm using the Sennelier version here. And I'm going to go ahead and preface this with I didn't put this on this list just because everyone says to use it, and I didn't put this on this list because it's my favorite color. It's actually probably my least favorite blue that I have on this list. I don't really like the, the color of it on its own, but I had to give credit where credit is due, and I picked this color because I use it more than any other blue and possibly more than any other color on my palette. It is so versatile and so useful for so many things that... I just had to put it here. It, it just makes sense. Especially for my kind of painting where I'm not looking for super, super 
bright, vibrant colors that are a little bit unnatural. I'm looking for those really earthy tones. You can get such a wide range of earthy greens out of ultramarine with this beautiful texture, which I also want to put in another aside here that I was really surprised. I surprised myself that I added in so many granulating colors because if you've been around this channel for any length of time, you know that I don't particularly love granulating colors. Um, they haven't historically been my favorite thing to work with and um, they just they just take it for me when it comes to the blue watercolors. I don't think you'll see that in other places on my list as much, um, but they definitely ended up here because I just think they add so much to these colors. So, okay, we've got our greens, we've got our purples. It's a warm blue. It's gonna make really vibrant purples. If you mix it with PB19, you'll get a shade um, that's very similar to the Rose of Ultramarine that Daniel Smith also sells in a tube. If you mix it with the transparent pyrrole orange, you will get a still rather purpley color, which I was a little bit surprised at because they're both such warm colors. I didn't think we'd get a purple, but it's there. Um, but of course, the most famous version of gray that you can get with this color is by mixing it with burnt sienna. That is underneath the green column here, and it's a really soft, um, I, that's the only word I can think of to describe it. It's a very soft gray. I prefer to use it with uh, burnt umber instead of burnt sienna because I think it gets a little bit darker and it's more useful for blacks. And then finally on the right hand side when we mix it with that thalo green you get this just beautiful shade of turquoise teal and uh, I love this for underwater subjects. Under the bottom here I did two little quick swatches with dioxazine purple to show you the really rich cool uh, purples that you can get with this if you like those colors. I'm not a big fan, but I know other people are. And I also mixed it with a bit of the Pyroline Green to show what deep, dark, moody blue greens that you can get as well. All right, we made it through our top five favorite blue watercolors plus one honorable mention. Here they all are listed out for you. I know this picture is, uh, the lighting is totally even on it. I apologize. I didn't have anywhere in my apartment to take pictures of how many swatches these are, <laughs> um, like all lined up in a row. So along the top row, we've got the ultramarine, the uh, anthroquinone blue, the Mayan dark blue. Second row is thalo blue cobalt teal and prussian blue and you can see those colors uh, in order across the bottom of the page as well so as i said at the top of the video be sure to let me know if any of these colors made your top five and if not what are on your top five in the comments below i do want to put in a note here that i am very aware that i left out a rather large category of blues that fall in that cobalt and cerulean range those just aren't colors that i use very often so they didn't make my personal top five list it doesn't mean that they aren't wonderful colors and that if you like them you should use them but like I said these are my top five favorites be sure to subscribe and come back next week for the next video in this series we'll be doing our top five favorite I think yellows maybe reds but I think I wanted to save red for closer to Christmas so I think it's it's yellow next week but uh, anyway go ahead and come back next week join me for that and, and the rest of the series I'm not sure how many episodes it's going to be yet at least six or seven I think is how many categories I had the last time I checked so uh, I look forward to sharing this series with you so thank you guys all so much for watching liking commenting and subscribing a special thanks to my patrons for uh, supporting me in this channel you guys are amazing and I will go ahead and see you in the next video happy painting